Today we're going to be talking about Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome. Um, now that is with two F's. So what it is is a pre-excitation syndrome, um, whereby you'll get a re-entrant tachyarrhythmia via an accessory pathway. Uh, it's a lot of words, um, but basically what it means is uh, normally, if you think about normal cardiac conduction, I'll start with silver here. The uh, SA node starts generating action potentials, starts sending out signals which have to go through the AV node here. <clears throat> and the AV node will send signal down one path through the bundle of Hiss, and it'll split out into the bundle branches and out the left and right and up. And that is the only way that the ventricles receive signal is through the AV node and the bundle of Hiss. And of course the AV node slows down the signal temporarily, allowing the atria to contract, fully dump their contents into the ventricles before the ventricles contract. Now what happens in Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome is there is this extra pathway pathway through some part of the normally insulated layer between the atria and the ventricles. So normally there's this tissue here that keeps signal from going through and forces it to go through this AV node pathway. And right here, let's say there's one defect in it. There's a little hole that allows conduction to get through. Now that accessory pathway is normally called the bundle of Kent. I don't know who Kent is, but he found this bundle. And uh, there can be more than one, and that's one of the uh, predictive factors as to uh, prognosis for this syndrome. So what happens is you get this leaky path, and you can get signal, let's say it's coming through the left atrium, and it can pass right through into the ventricles and keep heading this way. And so you'll get this um, this kind of dual pathway excitation. Now remember the AV node is still slowing stuff down. So while this is happening over here, suddenly latecomer to the party here fires off and it does this normal thing and they kind of meet in the middle. And what you get is this strange kind of looking you get your normal P wave, but then you'll get this kind of lazy rise in your QRS complex. This right here, this lazy rise, is called the delta wave. Now what you need to diagnose Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, along with your clinical picture, is a PR interval of less than 0 0.12 seconds. And that's this interval right here. And you also need to see the delta wave. Although it's not always present, you need to see it at least once. At least on the, the test. In real life, this may be different, but on the test, you'll be given the delta wave more, more than likely, or a picture of it. <clears throat> now, um, that's all well and good. The ventricle still contracts. It still ejects blood. Um, you might have signs and symptoms of occasional palpitations, dizziness, and shortness of breath, but normally it's not a huge problem. Um, where you get into trouble is uh, where you get these reentrant pathways that set up feedback loops, uh, which will give you a tachyarrhythmia. Now, um, let's say this area right here is kind of refractory some of the time. So what happens is you get your normal conduction, this is temporarily insulated because if it's refractory, signal's gonna not going to pass through here. But signal can still pass through here the normal way. And it'll give you receptral depolarization, and then it'll come up through the ventricle wall and back out in a retrograde manner through the bundle of Kent. Now once it gets back over here, all this stuff is probably not refractory, so it'll still conduct, and it'll depolarize all the way back to the nodes. 
Now if those get fired off again, you can see what happens. This gets fired off sooner than it would have, sooner than if the SA node had triggered it. And so you get another feedback loop. And it just keeps going faster and faster and faster and you'll get a tachyarrhythmia. Now with this one, if you think about the path that this is taking, this at the beginning of conduction looks normal. So you won't get this delta wave. What you'll get is a very narrow and normal looking QRS complex with some weird stuff kind of at the end. But normally it's called a narrow complex QRS tachyarrhythmia. And so a narrow complex means it's going anterograde through the AB node through the bundle of Hiss and coming retrograde through the bundle of Kant. Now the opposite can also happen. Let's say you hit this and it's kind of refractory. So we go this way, and this isn't refractory at the moment. So it'll pass through in an anterograde fashion all the way through and come back out the AV node in a retrograde fashion and start the cycle over again. So with this one, you'll get that widening complex. This one right here, you'll get a wide complex QRS. It'll still be a tachyarrhythmia, but you'll get this kind of longer kind of um, slope. So um, the normal risk to uh, a person with Wolf Parkinson White syndrome uh, usually isn't that high for most people. Um, things that might indicate a worse prognosis would be uh, unexplained syncope or palpitations that happen frequently. Um, one of the uh, worst uh, outcomes that are seen are people that have multiple accessory pathways, multiple ways for this to get through, um, just simply because that really, really kind of screws up how the um, conduction pathways in the heart work. Um, now, the way to treat this, there's two ways. There's medical and then there's surgical. With the medical treatment, you would think, oh, well, I'll just throw some sort of antiarrhythmic at this and then uh, call it a day. Uh, you really don't want to do that. You really want to think about what's going on because drugs like digoxin and beta blockers, verapamil, and uh, adenosine is another one. All of these guys are going to work mainly on this AV node and not even touch the accessory pathway. So if you give one of these, you're likely going to make it worse. You're likely going to throw them into a tachyarrhythmia of some kind. Um, what you really want to treat with, if you're going to go down the medical route, is procanamide. And now the reason being is that it's a class 1A antiarrhythmic which works on sodium channels and will act on this normal myocardium and will slow down this pathway. It increases the refractoriness and thus um, kind of helps insulate it. And a lot of people can do just fine on that. Uh, another option is class uh, 3 amiodarone. Now with this, there's an IV version, of course, for acute exacerbations, but there's also an oral version. Uh, however, the definitive treatment is surgical. And uh, the uh, main surgical treatment is called a catheter ablation. And uh, what that means is you take a small little catheter and you find where your focus is and you just shoot some electricity in there and basically give it a little mm, about the equivalent of a sunburn and what that does is it causes fibrosis and scarring of that accessory pathway and by damaging that accessory pathway it's going to cause it not to conduct anymore and thus 
you'll have something that really resembles um, normal uh, conduction pattern after you uh, do that. Um, now, if they have multiple accessory pathways, you might not want to go, um, you know, doing this all over the heart. However, um, in most cases, this is curative. And that is all you need to know about Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome.